today I'm catering this session for everyone here. For the people who have tried AR, they can see what are the real implementation of these applications, how you can use AR for betterment of uh, society and stuff. And for the people who have tried VR, you guys can think about this uh, VR aspects of uh, this further implementation, further improvements for your existing projects and such. And especially the uh, majority, the people who haven't tried these technologies and who have no idea what these technologies are, we can start from the beginning. So everyone, welcome to this session. And before starting, what if, uh, like, uh, let's say during this session, maybe like uh, I might lose electricity, maybe like uh, I might get disconnected. We don't know, right? This is like online webinar. So first thing, everyone to note, like uh, if I got disconnected or something happened, like just wait five minutes at least. And even if uh, like, can, like uh, you can log out uh, and probably then I'll be recording my session again and I'll hand over this uh, video to IIT team so they will publish it. So I just uh, reminded it before starting. And about myself a bit, so I'm Yasasri Vikram Singha. I'm working as a visiting lecturer for different different universities and I'm co-founder of uh, one of the startups that I'm currently involved with uh, called Navita CR Labs. And uh, I'm a senior software engineer currently working at 99X Technology. So if you've got any questions and anything to ask, uh, you can contact me via LinkedIn, uh, uh, Instagram. Most uh, of the time I'll be connected to both uh, LinkedIn and Instagram, or else you can try Facebook as well. Like there is a fact, like uh, some of you might have already known this, our solar system is also traveling like uh, 800 kilometers per hour through our space to, uh, within our Milky Way. So that's also a fact which is uh, already some of you might have known. But this particular fact is uh, not uh, clearly visible or it's kind of very hard to understand if you look at this particular kind of an image. So it's uh, just a representation of our planets and their uh, rotation, movement, but uh, you won't get any particular idea about this particular fact. It says the entire solar system is also traveling very fast within our universe. So right now, you are looking at our galaxy and uh, our solar system and with this video, it's showing how our entire solar system is moving with uh, every planet and uh, with their rotation together, it moves within our universe as well. So this is kind of a representation, a different way of representing our universe. Uh, and this particular representation actually gives you a completely different idea and a completely different perspective about our galaxy. So. I think uh, probably most of you haven't seen this thing, but this is the truth or the real behavior of our system, solar system. So the representation of this uh, solar system or any kind of so uh, system concept uh, will have huge impact on understanding its concept. If you can change the way you see the world, you can change the world you see. So it's just a matter of looking at a particular problem or looking at some particular hard to understand a scenario and if you change your perspective at that particular point you will uh, like uh, realize uh, some different different solutions different different approaches to address them so that's exactly what today we are going to look at for an example take your mobile phone so with uh, by using mobile phone you can do thousands of stuff but still, your mobile phone screen is a 2D screen. So it has a width uh, and a height uh, or screen size and it's 2D. Whatever you see or whatever you interact with your mobile phone, it's just a piece of glass and that's it. So you are dealing with this digital world just uh, with, by using 6 inch or 7 inch uh, piece of glass and that's it. 
and take an example your smart watch that also like a very small screen you can do a lot of stuff but uh, your digital experience and uh, all the like uh, information is represented using very tiny screen and same goes with uh, your smart tv your laptop any digital device usually it's 2d and of course uh, you can argue like now we have curved tvs yeah it's correct but still it's limited it has its own uh, dimension right so there's a huge uh, technical limitation when it comes to your digital devices so now we are going to address this particular problem this uh, physical dimensions of our de digital devices and we are going to talk about a real cool concept which is actually comes under we can categorize under three revolutionary technologies so those are actually virtual reality augmented reality and mixed reality so earlier these terms like vr ar those were like uh, limited to like science fiction movies likewise but now today it's not such it's real physical thing it's a fact now people are using these technologies and uh, we are going to talk about the future of these technologies as well first i'll give you a brief uh, introduction uh, about virtual reality so virtual reality means it's a software technology and uh, it can actually generate realistic uh, images and sound and other multimedia sensations to human and uh, it will actually replicate the real world so virtual reality you can actually generate a real world like uh, scenario surrounding but it's completely artificial and now we are going to talk about augmented reality so with the augmented reality thing it's not uh, like virtual reality here you are trying to blend your virtual stuff with the real world so i think even like i find augmented reality and mixed reality is more interesting than uh, vr in some context actually of course because uh, you have both feelings like uh, you have the feeling like you are in the real world as well and, and also you can combine your artificial or virtual world with real world so this this is like augmented reality so if you can see here uh, this mobile application can identify one particular predefined image and if that particular image detected this ar application can generate a 3d model on top of that so it's like uh, this particular animal is uh, like really on top of this uh, diagram but it's not it's ar we are augmenting we are augmenting 3d models in real world so mixed reality means you are combining all the characteristics in virtual reality and also augmented reality together so it's like uh, if you can remember in virtual reality i told you like to experience virtual reality you need to have kind of a wearable uh, it can be a google cardboard or it can be a high end device oculus or hololens or any kind of virtual reality supported device and also in ar i uh, told you like to experience ar uh, the most important thing is you should have kind of a camera so this camera is used to scan the real world because first you need to scan the real world and identify something to augment or to visualize the virtual object so for that don't get misunderstood like a, like a, you don't need a real like a photo camera kind of a thing even you can use like a infrared sensors or radar sensors to identify the surrounding as well so any kind of like depth sensing uh, technology will be Uh, fine 
so in mixed reality what we are doing is we are combining both together so if you can see this image so this particular uh, red box is google cardboard so it's kind of a basic wearable device and also with the cardboard as i told you if you are using google cardboard you 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 have to put your mobile phone into this cardboard so inside this cardboard box there's an android phone right now so they are uh, in android phone there, there's a camera so that android phone camera is uh, exposed it exposed to outside so there's a cut out here so that camera is exposed so that camera will always get the video feed into your air enabled uh, application so with that video feed we can do image processing and identify the real world and also since we have a wearable device uh, users we can like uh, feel users like they are experiencing this virtual reality experience so you can combine virtual reality experience and augmented reality experience together and you can enhance that in experience with the uh, mixed reality technology. and we have this uh, xyz axis right so i'm just uh, let me create a kind of a 3d object here with unity you also you can create some basic 3d objects but uh, the better way is like uh, if you are if you can't create like complex 3d objects with unity uh, it's easier for you to create those objects in using 3d authoring tool like maya 3d max kind of thing uh, even autocad uh, and you can import them but uh, simple objects you can create uh, from unity itself so i'll create a 3d cube here so we have this cube and uh, i'll create a 3d plane as well just like a ground plane like, like this so here you can see uh, we have a cube and we have plane and uh, then what i'm going to do is like uh, i'll add some colors to this uh, so we can add colors like uh, unity has something called materials you can create materials and uh, can add colors so i'll add uh, the material for red color it red and i can color our cube in red color and uh, i'll do another material like that uh, let's say green so for that uh, i'll color it uh, with green color all right so I'll drag and drop it to my 3D plane here, so it will get colored with that particular material. So we have a cube and we have a plane, and I have added colors to that. So, and uh, by default, Unity generates a main camera and kind of a light source. So we have that uh, main camera and light source something. And uh, right now we have basic uh, like layout for our application. So. Now, what we want to do is, uh, this is just a unit project, but still this is not uh, enabled with VR or AR anything. For that, we need to enable this VR functionalities. So in VR, uh, you need to do a lot of stuff like uh, user head movement, you have to track them. And also you have to generate realistic views uh, to the user. And also in VR, I told you like to experience VR, you have to wear a wearable device. So for that, you need to build your application to make it compatible with VR devices. So there are a lot of stuff, but uh, you don't need to worry much about uh, those uh, because there are a lot of uh, VR enabled uh, uh, tools or frameworks or like software development kits available. So just for the simplicity, I'm using this GVR SDK or Google VR SDK without going with the uh, high-end uh, daydream or stuff. Uh, but uh, the concept wise it's also same so yeah, if you are beginning uh, you can simply uh, go with this uh, google vr sdk and you can download the latest version from there it's like a 33 mb file you can download it so i have already downloaded file and uh, now what i'm going to do is uh, so now what i'm going to do is uh, i'm just going to import that sdk into unity so I am just uh, like uh, drag and drop our library file Google VR SDK into Unity and it will take some, some time to uh, decompress this library file and uh, you will get this model uh, asking what, what should be important and stuff. You can import everything. Um, so it will uh, 
uh, add a lot of files into your uh, assets okay so we imported uh, this uh, google vr sdk now first thing uh, i'm going to file and uh, i'm doing some setting changes to make this vr enabled application so for that i'm going to file and i'm going to build settings and uh, i will get this particular window there i can click on player settings and there you can see uh, this project settings uh, this panel there uh, if you go to player settings uh, the subsection player you will have different different uh, like uh, uh, settings to change uh, there we are interested in this thing virtual reality supported thing i just uh, enable it so i'm just enabling it uh, this virtual reality support thing this gvr or google vr editor emulator so you can just type uh, emulator in your asset search box and you will see this uh, blue color this icon so it's actually gvr editor emulator so that means uh, google vr editor emulator kind of library support this is coming under the our previously downloaded uh, google uh, vr sdk so i need this particular asset uh, to use so i added it now i have this so i'll just click play button and uh, let's see how it looks right now so here like uh, this is the result page so here you can't see anything it's just uh, empty sky because uh, our camera is uh, not focused well to this box so i have to do some adjustments in this xyz axis and uh, i can uh, change this uh, layout and i can focus our camera to show this particular box we are interested in uh, focusing this box with camera so what i'm going to do is in unity i'm going to create uh, something called uh, create empty game object so it's just a kind of a placeholder thing i'll rename this uh, camera thing so it's don't like uh, be much scared or afraid uh, because I'm, I'm pretty sure if you are new to Unity, these are like a lot of uh, details for you. But uh, just uh, like I, I just need to make this interest with, with you. Like if you have that interest, probably there are a lot of tutorials uh, you can follow and you can quickly grab this. So I, I created this camera rig. Uh, it's kind of a placeholder. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just uh, dragging and dropping this main camera into my camera rig game object so it's like a child element of camera rig so now it's like a kind of a grouping now and uh, in the in my left hand side in my inspector panel uh, i can uh, click on this uh, main camera and you can see in inspector panel it there's a thing called position you can actually uh, change position by entering values to xyz values so first i will enter 0, 0, 0 for everything so that means uh, my camera is going to be centered and uh, i'll do the same for camera rig as well our uh, parent uh, object so now both are like 0, 0, 0 for location then uh, i can move this and uh, i can focus my camera so while doing this what i'm going to do is i'll get uh, this game or output view into some side uh, panel and then I can see this better right I can focus this and I can move my uh, working space as I want and I'll adjust this and I'll just raise a little like this okay so now let's uh, play our game and see how it looks like okay so now uh, we have this uh, environment so uh, let me show it uh, bigger screen okay so this is our output right now so see uh, we have this cube and our plane and you can see this uh, unity is rendering this lighting really nice like we have just one light so you can see the shadow and everything and also still uh, unity is not uh, there's a setting called a light map generation or baking so we haven't even done this light baking thing that means not the this is not the real finished lighting uh, effect uh, even you can uh, do more smooth edges and everything so unity supports a lot of lighting effects like ambient lighting direct light uh, bounce light bounce effects everything it's really cool uh, so we have one box and 
the shadow and now ground plane and uh, since we imported our uh, google vr editor emulator now actually you can simulate or emulate uh, the head movements now uh, that's uh, because uh, we imported that library and now if i click uh, alt key and if i change uh, like uh, drag my mouse here and there you can see we are simulating user head movement so this is kind of vr input that uh, this application will get from the user the head movement so when user is turning their head uh, let's say right hand side so this application can track that from let's say if we if you deploy this application to android uh, this application can uh, call android operating system apis and get uh, the user head movements using in uh, your phone there should be a gyroscope and accelerometer from that your phone can track the head movement so that uh, sensor inputs can be directly accessed uh, from our android uh, ar vr application uh, if you deploy this to android environment same goes with ios so now our application can track head movements so that's enabled and also uh, let's say if users angling they are like head like this that that input also created so it's inbuilt now uh, into this application so that support is there so this is uh, the first uh, version of our vr application and uh, i can even uh, do kind of let's say in vr uh, i told you like you have to wear a wearable device but then and also like uh, okay so you are using a wearable device and uh, so how you can interact with your application i mean let's say there's a button so how you click it like uh, you can't physically touch that button right or you don't have a keyboard in vr how you give you some inputs so one way is you can use a pointer so you can use a pointer and when you are looking at some particular thing that uh, that that pointer is going to be a virtual pointer so if you are looking at let's say this box so you need to implement a function uh, like uh, you are double clicking this box that thing you can do like you can implement a pointer here and when uh, let's say you are pointing your virtual pointer or just simply you are looking at this object for 5 five, uh, five seconds then you can trigger a function so that virtual pointer thing is really cool so for that uh, i'll show that as well so we can use uh, uh, it's called actually reticle pointer so it's a gbr reticle pointer so it's also kind of a library function so what i'm going to do is uh, you just you can type it uh, like reticle pointer here so my spell is wrong uh, it's, it's called cle reticle pointer so you can type reticle pointer here and uh, you can drag and drop into this uh, hierarchy and here what i'm doing is i'm making this reticle pointer a child element of our main camera so i am releasing this on top of main camera so it will be a child element so now we have our reticle pointer so it's also there and also uh, if you select it and if you go to inspector panel and uh, you can see your reticle pointer material and there there's the attribute called color even you can uh, change the color of your point so let's make it uh, yellow and uh, you can do it so you have your reticle pointer as well and just one little thing you need to import uh, this if so with the reticle pointer you are dealing with events so you can introduce different different events for your virtual pointer for that i am importing google vr event system so i need this uh, event system so i'm just uh, releasing it in root level it's not a child element of anything just a parent uh, root level our event system so we have that as well and uh, in uh, main camera i just uh, need to enable one or only one particular setting so it's actually this uh, ray tracing uh, feature so i'm just enabling this uh, gvr pointer physics ray caster uh, component so it's how you can uh, do is like you just select main camera 
from the inspector you can add a new component and from there if you search like a ray caster so there are different different ray casters so now i let uh, the physics ray caster so i let it okay so uh, so now what we did was we in included a, a reticle pointer so it's like a virtual uh, pointer and uh, we have our event system so it will generate uh, it will identify some pointer events and also uh, we made our main camera uh, to enable this ray casting uh, with uh, physics uh, or it can now detect uh, whether you are focusing this particular one particular object or not something like that so let uh, let's play this and see how what's happening so i'm playing this so here now you can see in the middle of the screen there's a yellow uh, box a uh, yellow dot so that's our virtual pointer so with the pointer now you can implement some actions so you can implement some actions based on this point action okay so this is simple uh, vr application initial application so uh, if you have time i'll just uh, do one more thing with this and uh, i'll try to do, uh, show you some uh, virtual point actions related to that okay so for that actually uh, what we need to do is i'm going to this i'm selecting this queue so i'm going to implement some actions based on this queue and uh, for that i can uh, add some add a component to this queue so i'm selecting queue and going to inspect a panel and from there i am going to add a component so let's say uh, so that uh, component is event trigger component so if you search as event trigger event trigger component okay so this one event trigger component i am going to add it so my cube is now enabled with with this event trigger uh, component and with that you can add new event types for that so i am trying to add few events for an example so here when clicking this add new event type you can see different different events point enter point exit and also uh, you can add a point a click like so let's add a point enter event and also uh, point exit and uh, let's say point a click kind of event so now uh, we can track or we can trigger when our pointer is entering to this cube view then we can perform some kind of action it can be either color change it can be size change it can be a playing a video anything so you can script that so you can uh, do that uh, scripting so in unity usually unity is supported with uh, c sharp so earlier they supported javascript as well but right now it's c sharp so you can write scripts using c sharp so let's uh, let's just uh, try to create a minor script and show uh, so you can uh, create scripts like uh, if you go to assets so you can uh, right click uh, somewhere right here and you can create c sharp script and uh, there will be a new file generated so let's uh, name this like a color change script something like that and uh, now this is going to be a c sharp script and uh, you can actually double click and uh, you can start coding so with the scripts uh, by default they will generate a piece of code and uh, so this is a generated uh, code and for that uh, you can implement your own methods so actually uh, let's say something like this uh, so we want to change color so i'll just add uh, these three methods to this so th these are three methods actually uh, so one is uh, to make it red uh, one is to make it blue one is to make it black so what we are doing here is it's public methods first we are getting our component so this script we can attach this script to uh, some uh, object so we can at attach this script so we are going to do it so once we attach this script uh, we can actually uh, use this functions uh, related to that particular component so actually when let's say we are attaching this uh, color change script to our queue then by get component thing we are actually accessing our queue 
and we can access its renderer that means uh, the uh, component which is uh, responsible for changing its materials and stuff so we can address like uh, this component dot material dot color and you can assign different different colors so this is very simple application so this red method is doing it's uh, setting its uh, material color to red blue is it's setting its material color to blue uh, black it's setting its material color to black so simple three methods and that's it so we are not worried about this void start and update methods so just uh, simple three methods this is a simple c sharp code and uh, we have it so uh, you can uh, edit this using visual studio code uh, visual studio uh, simply and uh, you can use it and uh, i'll get back to my project so now we have this script so as i told you you can attach your script to your uh, queue so it's very easy like uh, you can drag and drop your script into your uh, queue so this is my selected uh, inspector panel for queue so they are actually i am dragging and dropping this color change c sharp script into that so we have that color change script and now we already added event trigger so i am going to enable these events now so let's say pointer enter thing so i can add uh, the pointer enter uh, trigger uh, functionality right now so here uh, it's, it's by default it's called runtime only uh, i'm not uh, going to describe much about these attributes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to attach our color change script into this second uh, box second box it's very easy like i'm dragging and dropping it uh, so it's actually now it's uh, this script is attached to cube and now our cube has event trigger for pointer enter thing and there we can enable some color changes now so from this uh, drop down now i can uh, see all the functions available so i'm interested in color change script functions and there let's say when uh, pointer entering thing uh, let's call our method uh, maybe let's say do color change script blue and uh, let's do the same for the rest uh, i'll just adding this and uh, i'm setting pointer exit uh, in exit event i want to change this to red and uh, in the pointer click event i want to change this to let's say black so i set it to black okay so we have that as well and uh, let now let's uh, compile and run our application and see how it works okay so now you can see when i'm entering my pointer into this 3d object it will get blue why that's because we have event trigger enabled and we have this virtual pointer so it will trigger the pointer enter event and we coded by c sharp when uh, this uh, method uh, blue method when we are calling that blue method we are setting this uh, cube material color into blue and when uh, pointer exit event you can see it will set back to red because we are calling red method and uh, we added another uh, trigger event trigger like a pointer click so i'm going to click my mouse right now so there you can see it's going to be black so this is very simple virtual reality experience and uh, even like uh, this is very simple uh, approach and let's see we can uh, now replicate this uh, objects here and there so let me like uh, increase number of objects so for each uh, cube now we have they have their own uh, script and event triggers and everything so i can uh, place these different different uh, 3d objects so this is our vr world this is our uh, virtual world that we are manipulating so this is uh, how i like to structure my world so you can place trees you can place uh, animations you can place uh, any particular virtual stuff here and there like this so with that you can see now unity is rendering this pretty quickly and you can see lighting shadows everything happening real time and still we are not uh, baking this project or we are not rendering this yet this is still in development mode 
but uh, you can do so okay so now we have couple of project uh, cubes here and there ola events enabled so now i'm going to run it in development mode okay so this is our pointer and we have cubes so let me move here and there so this is like you see this uh, rotating their head here and there so you can see when we are focusing our boxes will get its own uh, configured colors as well. and i can click on some objects so it will get black and when i'm uh, exiting from this box when i am exiting my pointer you can see uh, it's going back to red so likewise so this is a virtual experience and still you can't experience this with virtual reality because to experience this you need to have virtual reality enabled headset for that uh, the best thing is if you are really into this you can use uh, google cardboard and android phone and you can build this project to android device so you can simply go to build settings and uh, from there you can pick android and you need to have android sdk and you can build it then you have to, you will get apk file android file so you can uh, put it into your phone and there uh, when you open your you can install that apk and you can test it so when testing you need to wear a google cardboard or wearable device or there are plastic vr headsets you can put your phone into that then all this uh, simulation so in this development mode uh, i rotated my pointer by pressing my alt key and my mouse but uh, when you experience this with mobile phone it's just a matter of rotating your head so it's really cool and you will feel all these boxes are around you and when you are looking at boxes it's uh, changing colors it's very simple uh, vr experiment and see like i explained it and showed you it took like 20 minutes or something it's very easy it's just a matter of uh, your interest and uh, the way you are following so uh, yeah you know one uh, this is a common fact that uh, edgar el once said after a week uh, two weeks of learning usually people tend to remember only 10% of what they read and only 20% of what they hear and only 30% what they see but after two weeks even after two weeks people tend to remember 90% average uh, of what they say and what they do you know in learning there's a model called kinesthetic learning that means you learn by doing something that's the most effective way of learning so imagine uh, when you are learning uh, let's say gravity so how did you learn this concept called gravity so you can read textbooks you can read a lot of articles and uh, lessons but you experience gravity by throwing a stone to somewhere and then you will grab that concept so probably that's how we grab this gravity concept well but still uh, even einstein and people say gravity is combined with time dimension and everything we don't have any sense about that but there might be formulas but that part we don't know but the gravity basics we know it right so we experienced it so the same let's say you are going to learn quantum physics so how you are going to learn quantum physics how you can experience it you just you read books right but what if you can create a virtual experience to simulate this quantum physics you can design a real cool uh, vr experience to demonstrate how this quantum physics this quantum mechanics work and then you will have that sense of feeling that sensation there that learning is much more effective you can be our whole education build um, in many many ways and also this vr experiences can be used to promote something to promote the people to influence people even for commercial purposes and also you can use vr to de de promote stuff the real cool example is once uh, an experiment was conducted by stanford uh, virtual human interaction labs and they simulated tree cutting vr experience so it's available in youtube if you interested you can google this tree cutting cutting google uh, v, uh, tree cutting vr experience they are they designed this vr experience and ask uh, some particular group of people to use this application and uh, experience tree cutting and after that they did a survey and majority says said uh, i feel bad about myself 
cut and phrase and it's not a good thing to do that sense of feeling came by experiencing this particular experiment so you can actually use vr to de promote stuff as well so it's another real cool example that uh, you can be focused and also you know like uh, if you heard about uh, this uh, this thing called uh, uh, leap motion so leap motion is mostly into this uh, uh, experimenting uh, devices with vr ar stuff they are actually they in uh, develop this particular experience so let's have a look on that so here uh, students can experience this particular uh, 3d model in different different uh, ways you can look inside see what's happening uh, in, inside their body everything and uh, uh, if you can see here uh, even like this can be applied not just for a 3d model uh, like cat or something you can do for any kind of object even it can be a machine or something or it can be like a, uh, even a car or vehicle or anything so it's really like a nice concept to learn stuff in a uh, real interactive way so this is done by a company called leap motion So actually, with this experiment, what we wanted to try out is uh, these students are deaf students, so they can't grab uh, these uh, usual lessons quickly because they can't hear. But then we tried out this experiment. Uh, we used uh, AR, VR, everything together, uh, and uh, we wanted to try out kind of an experiment. Like uh, we gave them uh, this particular uh, device. with our application and uh, we uh, gave some uh, like uh, very simple questions after trying it out and we uh, noticed like this students can grab these concepts very fastly uh, if they are using with uh, this ar vr based approach and uh, we actually quantified it as uh, and we did a research paper so this uh, ar using ar for this kind of uh, education matters it's uh, like really really uh, valuable and it has real effect on that so with that also we published a research paper so i'm encouraging you all as well like uh, if you are like uh, really interested you can uh, write research papers it's another uh, thing that you can do with these technologies you can invent new stuff with these technologies you can propose new solutions and also one last thing so this is not just a manufacturing and education even you can use virtual reality or mixed reality to like uh, get out from your comfort zones and you can experience like uh, magical stuff for an example a world famous portrait or painting like this you can experience that uh, as real using uh, this uh, vr technology So this is a very famous uh, painting called Dali painting. So they are actually this is kind of experience designed by Oculus. So this is actually a painting, but now with these technologies you can experience like you are inside that particular drawing. 
this is like a magical experience but uh, with vr and ar it's uh, not a magic anymore you can go inside so now you are like uh, inside this particular drawing so this is like complete virtual environment and you will feel the drawing as something real yes and with that i really believe like these technologies can make uh, our work much more easy and much more effective and add more interactions and also uh, i really believe like there's a huge tendency of being these technologies our next operating system so we will be not limiting into windows or ios uh, limited to this uh, particular screens so our major problem was our screen dimensions but with vr and ar in reality we can uh, we can have this experience digital experience limitless so there's a high chance of uh, being these technologies uh, as the fundamental layer of our next operating systems and you know what like uh, this can yield us to like uh, understand who we are you can influence others you can promote stuff you can de promote stuff so my uh, advice is don't uh, use these technologies just because it's magic or oh, it's a gimmick part like you can uh, use this for the betterment and uh, you can use to represent your ideas in a better way there you can uh, introduce new uh, ideas even and uh, if you are aware about uh, these days like elon musk is working on his new project called neuralink so there he is he's actually tested it once so he implemented this uh, human brain uh, brain uh, computer interface a chip with that actually it's very easy to tap human brain human feelings and uh, get uh, signals out of that so why not uh, we integrate this uh, neuralink project uh, with uh, vr and might uh, he will end up with some virtual completely virtual stuff we don't know so, but probably there's a high probability like uh, being these technologies uh, is our next operating platform one last thing this is my favorite quote by richard buckminster uh, kind of american architect and uh, theorist author and designer futurist actually once he said if you want to teach people a new way of thinking don't bother trying to teach them instead give them a tool then they will use it to lead they it will lead a new ways of thinking and new generation of idea and better solutions for common problems so don't invest these technologies for solutions which are not addressing any problems just use these technologies to address a common problem and your solution will be amazing so with that i'm really grateful to do this session with you so i'm yasas revikramasinghe 